New York. Kevin Rivers, record of 14 and one. That one loss came to a journeyman at the StubHub Center where he was dropped for the first time. And when I mean journeyman, Brian, was a guy who was picked up off the streets two days beforehand. A guy who goes from 122 to 135. But when you get tested as a youngster and you get dropped by those tough Mexican fighters, you gotta pass those tests. After that, he's turned it around. But the test tonight against Diolo Guin, and don't let the 11 and 10 record fool you. You came in saying, hey, we got a good scrap coming. Yeah, um, you know, on, on paper, you look at it and say, ah, I'm waiting for the next fight. But you got to sit down and watch this fight because paper doesn't tell the tangibles. The tangibles here. You have Rivers who, you know, again, on paper, 14 and 1, okay, he's a prospect. He's on the A side. But he lacks confidence when it comes to fighting durable, tough guys. He lost that one fight against a journeyman, but who was tough and durable. So the early rounds, I expect him to be flashy, confident, and within himself. But as he gets tested, the fight goes on. I want to see if he can remain, stay within himself, and remain calm and confident. Yeah, when I met him four years ago, his nickname was Case Smooth. Right. Saw him uh, about an hour ago. I'm like, what's up, Kevin? He's like, hey, <laughs> my new name is Kraken. I'm like, all right. So, so he's not smooth anymore. But if you're Kraken, that's a nickname you better live up to, right? Absolutely. You better bring some pop. And he gets hit with the left, right hand by Ogin. Right. And again, early on the first two rounds, he's going to get cracked. I don't, I don't expect him to wither at all. But as the fight goes on, he's able to land his shots and the guy keeps coming. I want to see his mental state. That's one thing you have down in your notes, right? Confidence. Yes, confidence. Nope. He doesn't fight well backing nope. up, so he has to stay in the pocket and get angles in, in the pocket. Don't back straight up. Ogain has nine KOs, but they were against much lesser opposition. Ogain, Golden Boy has been using him recently to test their young up-and-comers. You pass the Ogain test, you move on. <laughs> In Ogain, he comes in, this is his second, this is his hobby, so to say. You know, he has a career outside the ring in, in the marketing field, yeah. in, in a corporate marketing field. So when you, get a guy, when you get a guy like this, you have to really keep in his mind that he's an opponent. If you give him that bit of confidence that he don't have to lose this fight, he won't Back. lose. Back. Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico is where Gil Ogain is from. Good opening round. <laughs> Baltazar Molina, his trainer. And Sus Reyes in two seconds. One, two, the right hook. You see both guys standing in the center of the ring trying to hold the ground. Nice overhand right that missed by Rivers. So it's end of the round, the overhand right landed by Ogain. Ogain's corner before that highlight was telling him he's waiting for you to come in so he can throw that left hook. Be careful with that. And how you offset that? You, there's, a, there's a left hook that Rivers just tried. How you off the, offset that is going real low, behind a jab. You know, force the taller guy to punch low, bring his hands down. Rivers started boxing it. Eight. Hooked up with no excuse Jim. Also were Lamont Roach, who can, at 130 pounds. Also the Demetrius Ballard, a 168. Good, good quality Jim. And Ogain hits him with the right. 
And those shots aren't really moving Rivers yet, but if he continues to get hit, those shots are going to start to move him and hurt him. He needs to get on a jab. Rivers, Rivers needs to commit to a jab, get on a jab, get a rhythm going. He's trying to stand and fight with the shorter D. Referee Gary Rosado warns about the clash of heads. Rosado with his 200th fight. Another clash of heads. And I contribute that to Rivers. Rivers should not be standing on the inside, bending low, clashing heads. Rivers comes in with the right. Stay on the outside. Now, maybe him changing his nickname, forcing him to fight a little different. Nice right uppercut to the body by the game. Body work for one punch at a time, huh, Brian? Yeah, see, Rivers trying to fight with him. You can get respect without trying to fight. Get respect by controlling the guy. He's not controlling the guy right now. Making this fight too hard for himself? Yeah, he, he gets hit. He's getting hit and he's trying to come right back and counter with, 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 a, with a shot of his own. You cannot make up for a punch that landed. You got hit, fine. Get on the outside, get back to basics. Bogain with another left hook. Not known for his power though. He'll stay there nice and trade right. Yep. And Rivers is giving Bogain the opportunity to land those right hands. He's just bending in, trying to punch the power shots without landing a jab. Body shot from OP. Rivers with the one-two. Trying to land that left hook, isn't he? The game is just missing with that left hook to the head, although he's landing a nice left hook to the body. Second round, winding down. Only scheduled for six. Good right hand by Rivers at the end. Well, I mentioned earlier, tall guys should not be clashing heads. And you can see there, Rivers leans in and clashes heads. As the round went on, Rivers tried to get into that fighting posture, land two nice body shots, misses the overhand right, but again comes back with that left hook to the body. So he's trying to come back and slow deep up with body shots. Third round of action. Yul Ogin, his last fight, he fought the Aloha Kid and Bruno Escalante. Small show in Salinas, California. But you were there. I was there for that one. And after the judges read the cards, now Escalante, who had a lot of people in the crowd, <laughs> not many were cheering. And Escalante won the fight, but, es but Ogin won the crowd. Right. A lot of people ringside thought Ogin might have won that fight. And before that, he went through a slew of Golden Boy fighters. Tino Avila, Horacio Garcia, Azar Humanisi, we're going to see later on, Emilio Sanchez. He lost to all of them, but he gave them all quality work. Just like he's doing right now with Kevin Rivers. And that's why, as a young prospect, you have to be careful with just looking at your opponent's record. You see a little swelling over the left eye of Rivers, maybe from the class of heads. And he just took a nice overhand right. Rivers blinking the left eye. See, it, it, and Digu just turned southpaw. He does that a lot. He does it very comfortably, he said. Nice right up the cut. But Rivers should step back. After landing, he's landing one shot. He's not giving himself the room and leverage to land more than one shot. One shot, then he falls in. Elegante is his nickname, the elegant one for Diolo Guin. Cracking Kevin Rivers. Waiting for him to let it go. 
And you look at the footing of Rivers. His legs are too wide, which is why he's unable to land combinations. Body shot. That should not have been a knockdown. And Rivers is saying a slip. Yeah, Rivers swung and missed. It was off balance. That was not a knockdown. Rivers said immediately, I slipped, but he didn't complain too much. Regardless, a big swing in the round for Gil Ogin. I mean, I understand why you don't complain, because complaining does nothing to, nothing to help the situation. Could that be the spark to wake up, Rivers? Body shot, got right on the belt. A nice body work by Rivers. Yeah. Now he's walking up, Brian. But he's following the back, the back. without jabbing. Left hook there, I think, hurt Rivers. Up the cut from Ogin. Ten seconds to go in the third round. Which was ruled a knockdown for Gil Ogin. It's only six rounds, so that could be important in the judges' eyes. Yes, Good work, I got a few in there. Got to get you to go back there and get some water when the hour's ready. Come on. Stay sharp, man. Pick it up on the Joe. Side to side, faint. Work all the faint. Wop, wop, wop. Step around. Come back with another set of combinations. All right, the body shots work. The dream doing me enough, okay? 1167 to You got to work now, all right? Well, from naked eye, it looked like it was a slip. Looked like River swung and missed. Well, let's see the angle here. He got hit with a... Yeah, he, he swung, left hook. He missed. He's off balance. Here's a tighter shot of the action. He did get hit with a right uppercut, but he swung. He missed. That was not a knockdown. Fourth round of action. That's Kevin Rivers. You scoring over there, Brian? I am. I have to score 29-28. Four. Deegan. So you have Dulo Gein. That knockdown being the difference. I scored a 10-9. I didn't score a 10-8. Okay. But I scored the first round for Rivers, the second and third round for Gein. On the very unofficial scorecard. Tony Stone Resort Casino, Verona, New York. Rivers, playing a good left hook. Eats a right hand from Ogin. If Ogin had more pop. There's a nice two. Oh, he lands a good right, and he buckled Rivers. Yes, he did. Rivers trying to swing with the opponent. 14 and one against 11 and 10. Who's who right now? Uppercut from Ogin. If you remember, if you recall, I said, Rounds four, five, and six, I want to see how Rivers responds. And he's responding with some action. But he's responding in a way that I, I'm not comfortable with if I was in this corner. Why? Because he's trying to fight. There's no need to fight. You, you got, Ugain has some momentum. He landed some nice shots in there, so you don't want to keep the momentum for him going. Slow the tempo down. Ogin has gone the distance except for the rematch he had against Horacio Garcia. And that was a fight where they went up in weight. And that was a personal one where there was a rematch. And a lot of trash talking in Guadalajara. But that was a technical stoppage that Ogin objected to. So this kid is tough. So if Rivers is there trying to go for a knockout, he's going to have to really earn it. Ogin, blood from his mouth. And, and Rivers had the nickname Smooth up until this fight. Yep. He should go back to being smooth. Just try to be finesse. Try, try to finesse him. Try to box. Again, you have to frustrate a guy who wants to fight. And Ogin is clear he wants to fight. This is exactly what Ogin tries to do with, I've said in his last six fights, he tries to draw you into this, to muck it up, make it ugly. Because it's one criteria that I love to look at when I watch fights, and that's called ring general. If he forced guys to fight the tempo and the way he wants, he's winning the ring generalship category. 
nice left hook yeah. right here. Another one. All about just missed right. that left hook. Done with four in Verona. A good one between Yulo Gein and Kevin Rivers. Hey. Este fue, este fue, este fue para él. Vivo. Lo tomé. Te quedaste parado. Lo tomé. Te quedaste parado. That no quiero que me quedes aquí. Quiero que me empieces a rebotar, paso lateral y me regreso. Pero no quiero que te me quedes de frente, ¿sale? Don't bleed in. I want quiero you to move around. Quiero que empieces con el jab. Para que esté pegando de izquierda, que te estés cambiando. Cámbiate en putiza, güey. Y no me sales con, con, la, con, la, con las manos abajo, güey. Don't keep your hands down. The last round, look at Duquesne. Look at the concentration, the eye. Overhand right, he stepped in. Here on the inside, he lands a right hand. He gets a little separation. Again, boom, overhand right. So he's moving his legs on the inside while he's moving his hands. The last piece of advice for Ogin from his corner was keep your hands up. I don't want you to get caught. In Ugain's corner, I guess they're trying to keep him alive because they said, you lost that round. I thought he clearly won that last round. Let him out, let him out, let him out. Step back, step back, stay open, step back. This corner just turned around and asked me, how do you have the card? Like, what do you got? <laughs> he said, I think we're tied. Well, I haven't scored 39-37 in favor of Ugain. I think he's doing some nice work. He's controlling the action. I think his corner is also a nice check left hook. Now, Ogin is not your typical starving fighter who's willing to take a fight anywhere on two days' notice. Right. You mentioned that he has that marketing firm with his family. He's college educated. He didn't fight for two years. He said he was in a management problem. He's like, so I just sat out. He's like, I didn't have to fight. I got money. <laughs> like, Couldn't you lend us a buck or two, bro? Listen, that sounds familiar. During my career, my, my first management had issues with him. I was college educated, had a bachelor's degree. I set out the last year and a half. I said, I'll let the contract run. I don't, I don't need the, the money. I don't need the aggravation. So I understand where he's coming from. On the, on, on the same side of that fence is the pride factor. When you do get in there, you want to give it your all. And you can see who gains doing that. Well, Dean actually started off his pro career at the same gym where Canelo Alvarez trained with Chepo Reynoso. He was in that same gym. Kevin Rivers out of the no excuse. Capitol Heights, Maryland. Rivers just making this fight way too hard for himself. Because he's standing in the pocket. He's not moving his head. And watch him again. He's moving closer and closer. He's inching closer and closer. Without even jabbing. He's just keeping his legs moving. Look, closer and closer. And every time he gets in range, he knows his distance. He punches and lands right hands and left hooks. And Ugain must have just taken the first half of this round off because he really hasn't done much. He's allowed Rivers to outwork him this round. Good shots landed by Rivers here with 40 seconds to go in the fifth. See, now Rivers doing what I said he should have been doing in the second round. Inside, he's getting angles and he's punching. He's boxing for yeah. the first time. And he's keeping his offense going. So if you have your offense going, your opponent can only go defensive. Strong round for Kevin Rivers as it winds down in Verona, New York. Get out of the way, he leading off with the right hand. 
Ele bloca e tem como de pôr o tempo ali. Slide in, ok? Ali, quero mais golpes. Esse recto não me lo está sacando. Four punches, you need to throw your right. Pero quiero quero mais dois golpes, quero mais. Papá, me retiro. Two punches. Quero que empiece a pegar mais. Um pouquinho mais, sale? More, more. Quero que me tire mais forte. Mais, mais. Stronger punches. Quero que me tire mais, sale? Si puedes, cabrón. Yes, you can. Let's go. Both corners imploring the fighters, like, let's go. And there was it in the third where a knockdown was ruled against Kevin Rivers. And that's going to be critical, I think. And they both come out aggressive. Good opening bout tonight in Verona, New York, Turning Stone Casino. Yeah, good action fight yeah. for a six rounder. They didn't take a round off. Neither guy really took a round off. Rivers a lot on the line. Golden Boy having different TV deals, trying to develop fighters. He knows that they're watching him. Golden Boy president sitting ringside. And if you want to take that next step, you got it. Gotta Impress. Yeah. Watch it. What you see the scene. And Logan, you know what he is. He's a he's a test. <laughs> yes. It's a tough test. But to River's credit, he came out and he's trying to fight. And, and, and one thing he's doing that he hasn't done in the previous five rounds, he's backing Ugina. For the first time this fight? Yes. The entire round, he's been backing Ugina. Ugina against the Rose for the first time. And most aggressive offensive guys can't fight backing up. And that's what Rivers is doing, backing Ugina. You were talking about that ring generalship. We're seeing it here in the sixth. Yes. Body shot from Ogin. Goes up there with the hook. Another body shot from the Mexican. And he hurt Rivers with that body shot. That left hook to the body, to the kidney area hurt him. And he's going right back to it. You see Rivers take a deep breath. And the punch that's there for Rivers is the right uppercut. Because Ogin's in the southpaw, right? Yes, and Ogin's coming straight in with his leaning forward. Watch Ogin, leans forward. The right uppercut is there. Half step back. Instead of falling in like Rivers is doing, half step back and throw the uppercut. But he keeps falling in. Third round, a knockdown. Win against Kevin Rivers. He said it was a slip. You thought it was a slip. And the replay referee showed. ruled it. Yeah, referee rule, which is important. Danny rule, rule a knockdown. A replay showed, you know, no punch landed. And if he's got a 10-8 round, as the judges are required to score, well, then he's in command. It's academic now for Rivers. And some of these rounds have been really tight. See how the judges score it. See, on my scorecard right now, I would have a score of 58-58, a tie for Rivers. But I scored the third round 10-9, not 10-8. That'll do it. Good six rounds between Kevin Rivers and Dio Olguin. And if you're watching Olguin for the first time, that's exactly how he fights every single round. And you wonder, and you make you wonder, or you understand why certain managers won't send their good prospects up against this guy. He, <laughs> he, he's just so difficult, to, and you you're never going to look good against him. He, I know a lot of people say opponents are needed, and you need journeymen. I don't really necessarily agree with that um, that statistic, but guys like Gein is needed in boxing. Yeah. There's guys that come in, you know they're going to get knocked out, and you have guys like right. Gein, you know that it's he's going to be fight. tough. Yeah, he's going to fight. When, when lose or draw, he's going to fight. Gein doesn't get the memo that he's supposed to lose. He fights. And even if he gets it, he ain't reading it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the look on Rivers' face. Some concern there. Put it this way, he doesn't look overly confident. And Ogin again wins the crowd. You see him going around. They don't know who he is. They don't know how to say his name. D I U H L Ogin. Right. <laughs> and there, somebody in the crowd. He walks around, puts his hands up. Crowd reacts to him.
But I scored a 57-57. But again, that third round, I scored 10-9. Well, let's see what the judges have to say as Joe Martinez has our winner. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Kevin Morgan has it 58-55 for Rivers. Dontrella, 58-55, old game. And Eric Barlinski has it 57-56. Your winner by split decision. From Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, the knockdown. The knockdown was the was a determinant factor there because they scored it 10-8, which was, was made it 57-56. Dio Ogin from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, ekes out the split decision and gets his victory and the big smile in his corner because they said the last few fights, they felt like they should have won. Well, that's why you continue to fight if you're Dio Logine. Forget the record. You come up and you put on a show. And a good fight there, Brian Adams. Excellent fight. And for all the featherweight prospects out there, be prepared to get tested if you fight Dio Logine. Yeah, it was a good fight. They went six hard rounds. The big difference right there was ruled a knockdown. Rivers said it was a slip. Replay showed it wasn't. But then you, Rivers tried to get back into the fight. But Ogin gets the victory. Hits 12. He improves at 12 and 10. Kevin Rivers falls the 14 and 2. And, it, and it's tough when you lose a fight on something that wasn't legit. It wasn't a legit knockdown. But you could have done so many more things. Take care of that. As you were saying to Brian, you got a box. You got to control it. Yeah. The ring generalship. And I, when I met you about an hour ago, you said, we got a good fight, our first one. <laughs> you're like, this is going to be dangerous. Brian Adams, you're coming in, Nostradamus. Let's go buy some lottery <laughs> tickets, man. <laughs> Bethel Duran and a former lightweight Brian Adams went 17-4 and four as a pro, now running the New York Daily News Golden Gloves, the director. We're at Turning Stone Resort Casino in Verona, New York. And I'm sorry, Brian, also four time Golden Gloves. I Thank mean, you, sir. We're going to give accolades here. We got to <laughs> do it right. Representing all of the boroughs. The ho home would be Brooklyn. Coming up next, we're going to have George Rincon, who's at, out of the same gym as Kevin Rivers. No excuse. And uh, he'll be taking on Corey Gully uh, out of Killeen, Texas. We're going out of Carrollton, Texas. So we have two Texans going at it. So state bragging rights. And Recon, young, southpaw. He's pretty tall for the weight. He had an extensive amateur grade. He beat a lot of guys who are prospects now. Our main event of fighter you're very familiar with, Brian, says, oh, maybe in the womb, huh? Saddam Ali, U.S. Olympian, WBO champion, ended Miguel Cordo's last fight. We, everybody thought it was going to be a walkover. No, no, no. He put on a show, won the belt. He was supposed to fight Liam Smith, the Brit back now, a couple weeks ago. They found Jaime Munguia, Tijuana, Mexico. Saddam Ali said, I'm a boxer. I am prepared. He's always locked in. The world kid, Saddam Ali. And Jaime's not a given. Oh, no. Give me for him. Oh, no. That was talk of Mungia fighting Golovkin. Yeah. Moving up to fight Golovkin. Yeah, so they did Saddam no favors. Liam Smith did no favors to him. And there's a Saddam said, I bring it. I'm not getting respected by anybody else. Well, let's go. Turning stone to beautiful resort casino. Our next bout, there you see George Rincon, 3-0, Corey Gully, 2-1-2. and two. Four rounds in the super lightweight division coming your way. Um. Corey Gully, some water last second. Uh, George Rincon ready to make his rewalk. You hear the mariachi music. Gully has a growth one that says, I'm not a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. 
on the back of his robe. George Rincon with a sombrero. As you see the mariachis wearing. Family's roots are in Mexico. He grew up outside of the Dallas area. In Carrollton, Texas to be exact. Just north of Dallas. Near the home of the Dallas Cowboys training facility. He's 3-0. You mentioned that extensive amateur. And we'll see the tail of the tape. Brian. Well, Recon, he's the young guy in this fight. He's the one that's going to have the energy. He's the taller guy. He has the reach. Statistically, everything is in his advantage. You just have to go out and perform. Joe Martinez is our ring announcer. He's ready to go. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds this scheduled in the super lightweight division. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Don Ackerman, Glenn Feldman, and Kevin Morgan. When the action begins inside the ring, referee in charge, Gary Rosado. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing red and white, trimmed in gold, he weighted officially 138 and one half pounds. A five fight veteran has two victories, one defeat and two bouts even. From Killeen, Texas, here is the warrior, Corey Colley! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing yellow, trimmed in white, he weighted officially 140 pounds even. At three professional bouts, he stands perfect. Three victories, no defeats, one win by way of knockout. Here's the undefeated super lightweight from Carrollton, Texas, George Rinko! Andy Chavon, the third man of the ring. He's his 100th fight tonight. Officiating, this one's four rounds. George Rincon, the gold. The Southpaw, if you mentioned his amateur career. Went to the 2012 Olympic trials. Yeah, he beat guys in amateurs such as Dalen Henry, Robert Easter Jr., Dante Strayhorn. Horn. So he beat some quality guys and amateurs. He said it also went up against Amiri Mon and like, he's like, you name it in that era of the circle, I went up against him. I right, beat Amiri Mon. Oh, did he beat Amiri yes. Mon? He just told me he faced him. Humble kid. Usually guys will tell you everybody they beat. Even right, right. Especially <laughs> amateurs, they'll tell you who they who they beat, even though it wasn't a, a win for them. <laughs> yep. Well, you can see he's pretty solid. Nice hard shots, tight defense. He moves in behind the jab. He's a southpaw boxer, but he's right-handed naturally. So to box at the age of eight, his dad, Jorge, took him. His younger brother, Alex Rincon, will be fighting next week in Indio, California. He's a 23 years old, a nice fighter. Also had a nice amateur background. Rincon, his dad is his trainer, but they, when he does camp, he goes to the Washington, D.C. area, that no excuse gym. So just something different, get out of your comfort zone. Now imagine yeah. there's a fighter getting out of comfort zones. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Who would have thought that? And Gully is, is trying to stand his ground, but what I think Gully should do is rely on counterpunch. He should just try to counterpunch, try to time Rincon. Because standing in the pocket, we call it just much bigger than him. Yeah, you see that height difference, walking him down. That ring generalship we talked about earlier. His shoulders are, are, are even very broad. He, he's much bigger. So the only way to be the bigger guy is you got to get under his shots and you got to counter punch. A jab from Rincon. Got those white gloves. So Schedule for four. Working our way towards Saddam Ali, Jaime Munguia. Before that, you're going to see Ray Vargas and Azad Hovanesian. The belt's on the line coming your way. Recon's fourth professional fight. Usually, 
Guys, when they're in their less than five fights, they come out a thousand miles an hour. Well, he has that amateur experience behind him, so he knows how to pace himself and be patient. He's not trying to jump at the prize immediately because he's been there on amateur level. And people don't talk about the importance of amateur pedigree, but it's very important. Oh, nice big right hook. Right. He caught him in between shots. Gully was trying to lead with his left hand, and he got clipped with a right hook. Right at the bell. Ring Pone drops Gully. And Gully going the wrong corner. Gully still looking. Well, he's still a little dazed and... Goalie has to fix his own I stool. Yeah, and his corner didn't even get the stool up. You got, got, you got to put the pressure again on the inside. You're giving him too much respect in that round. Too much respect. You got to stay inside, work that body, and work off the top. Okay? Hey, Kevin. How you doing? You're giving okay. too much respect in that round. Answer the man. You know what round it is? You say, you know what I'm saying? Come on, you got you to you wake up, babe. You gotta put that pressure. Give me too much respect. I'm gonna give you a shot. Well, Rikon was bullying him give all fight. Respect. There you see, at the end of the round, a huge right hook. Just as Gully was about to throw his right hook. Come on. You gotta work on the inside. On the outside, you know, it's not going to happen. Rikon, 3-0, 1-K-O. Oh. He was matched pretty good early on because of that heavy amateur background. And I don't like the advice that Corey Gully's trainer, Jesse gave. Oh, dropped him again. That might be it. This time he caught him coming in. He got up real quick. Didn't even take the eight. He got up. He popped up right away, Brian. And I'm a god on the limb here. Say the fight won't go another minute. It might be done. It yeah, won't go another seconds. minute. Referee's looking at him right away. Recon in for the kill, and it's over. That was a little premature, but it didn't matter. It was a matter of time. Right, right. Didn't matter. Protect the fighter, and that's what he did. He was coherent during that exchange. Again, it didn't matter, but I think it was a little premature. George, they were thinking about the first round knockdown. George Rincon hugging his dad. Gets the victory. He's now 4 0, his second KO. I know you're supposed to do that early in your career, but it was impressive the way he did it, how he did it, yes. But he took his time. Right, and he was real precise with his shots. Beautiful right hooks. Yeah, Gully's fine now. But he, he that, wasn't going to be if they kept going. Right, 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 right. But terrible advice. The tra his trainer told him, stay inside, get your respect. Rickon was much too big to stand inside and get respect. If you stay, you stay inside, you got to be low, and you got to give angles. Now let's look at the first knockdown that happened at the end of the first round. Pitch a perfect right hook right on the button. That actually had him in serious danger, but luckily for him, the bell rung. Another angle there, picture perfect. So then when round two starts, what does Raccoon do? Raccoon jumps right on him. First round, the right hook worked. Why not continue to throw the right hook? And here's how it started the second round as Raccoon jumped on him immediately. And you see Gully's trying to attack because his corner told him to get close. As he got close, Raccoon landed that check right hook right on the chin again. So I didn't understand why they had him attacking. You see him coming forward, right hook. His guard was up, but he just got hit with that right hook. And he got up, his eyes looked clear. He took the count, shaking his head. Okay, I know where I'm at, I'm fine. Upset. Walk to the, the ref. And then Raccoon jumped right on him and did what he was supposed to do. Jumped right on him and finished it. He forced the referee to stop the fight because he just kept throwing punches. Representing for his steel Beto, he got the mariachi hat on. George Rincon.
said he wanted to play soccer in high school, but his dad wouldn't let him. So, you know, you got the skills in boxing, and here's how the fight ended. Nice right, left hand to the body. He backed him against the ropes. Two shots landed, three, four. And you could see Gully trying to retaliate, trying to let the referee know that I'm okay. Usually, if you don't throw any punches, they'll stop it. Gully threw wrong right hook there. Then he goes to throw another left hand, but at that point, the mind was made up. The ref stepped in. He said, I'm okay, but it didn't matter. George Rico gets first. the victory. Sportsmanship between the two. Uh, Joe Martinez in the ring with his microphone in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially 37 seconds, round number two. Referee Gary Rosado steps in, puts a halt to the bout. Your winner by TKO victory. He is still undefeated. George Rico! Fourth career victory for George Rincon, his second KO, Carrollton, Texas' own. Go back home with the victory. And his younger brother, Alex, will be fighting next week, so. The fighting oh. family continues with the father who introduced the young fighters to the sport at the age of eight, Jorge Rincon Sr. Turning Stone Resort Casino, Verona, New York, is where we are tonight. Beth Duran, former lightweight Brian Adams. Upstate New York is where we're at. How far are we from the city? About four and a half hours. Oh, easy drive. Just I like, did the drive up today. Yeah, just like L.A. to Vegas, baby. Nice and cruising. <laughs> yes. And it's always fun when you're driving to watch boxing. And it works in boxing. Bonus coverage. The heavyweights coming your way. And you never know what you're going to get with the heavyweights. There's always that potential for the big knockdown. As they go back and forth, we've seen uh, two fights pretty good so far. Jolo Gein, a split decision victory. Alex Rink, or George Rincon with a KO, stop or TKO. Coming up next, the heavyweights, Alex Vanas, 3-0, three, oh, three KOs. Ray Santiago, 2-7. and seven. Carmel, New York against Albany, New York. Four rounds scheduled. Albany right down the road. Bonus coverage coming your way. First round action in the heavyweights. The Southpaw, Alex Vanasse, 3-0. Ray Santiago, Orthodox fighter. He's 2-7. And, and right away, Vanasse coming out swinging big. And he's on his toes. He's coming out early trying to get respect on big shots. Both in the black and red, Vanase being the southpaw. So if I bet on the guy in the black and red trunks and the black gloves, I, yeah. uh, I'm safe, huh? You good? You got black and red. Wow, swing and a miss from Vanase. Santiago, Puerto Rican roots. Get that rosary tattooed around him. And, and with Santiago, usually heavyweights, especially early on, they're not fluent in their movement. So Santiago should be a prime pressure. <laughs> body shot. Plenty of body for Santiago to hit with. Vanasse, the taller fighter. And Vanasse just a little awkward. Vanasse keeping those hands real low, huh? But he's, in. Yeah, he's on the outside. He's, he's nowhere in danger, so he can flirt with keeping his hands down and moving around. There you go. Do it again. 
And, and, and the key is going to be Santiago coming in, getting clipped as he come inside. But now say just all power shots, huh? Santiago looks very confused with the movement. And Vanasa continues to move around. And again, the way to stop movement like that is to just crowd him. Try to get close. Try to corner him. I, I just think, sorry, I just think Santiago is unable to do that. One, two from Vanasse. Ah, uh, Vanasse here in the opening round. It's scheduled for four of the heavyweights. <laughs> the Vanasse throws very wide. But it's okay to throw wide if the opponent's not throwing anything. And Santiago's just not throwing anything. Second round of action. And Santiago's corner told him, if you're going to back up, back up low. Back up coming out low. Don't back up straight up. Wild swing and a miss from Vanasse. Vanasse, the southpaw. And Vanasse is just busy. I don't think there's any purpose on his punches. He's just throwing punches, all arm punches at yeah. that. All arm punches. As you see, Santiago breathing heavy. He turns southpaw now. And as a heavyweight southpaw, it's easy to rack up wins because you're going to confuse 99% of the guys you face. But Vanasi just needs to really tighten up on his technique. Because his technique, he's all over the place, arm punches. You see, he has Santiago confused. Santiago's from the Southpaw Orthodox. He's not throwing punches. He's not doing much. On that neck. On and he neck. doesn't know where the punches are coming from because Vanasi's throwing punches from all over, all over the place. All over the place as you get it. Second round is scheduled for four. Of Alex Vanasse, who's undefeated 3-0 with three KOs. And I can see how, how he has three KOs, because he, he frustrates and confuses guys just as he's doing with Santiago. Santiago dropped the sands and took a step back. Has to say, come on, let's fight. Wild swinging. And then just when you think he's not fighting, he comes in throwing wild punches. See right here, he walks away. He's trying to lull you to sleep, then he comes in and throws punches. And he's, yeah, trying to lull you. The heavyweight's not much action going on right now, but it's all Vanasse. Tricky style. And again, I think he just needs to really tighten up. Again, Santiago looks frustrated. Drops his hands, take a deep breath, and he gets clipped with a couple of shots. And he's doing all this movement 
Benassi is, and he has a knee brace. Yeah, towards his <laughs> left leg. <laughs> He's got the knee brace, so both of these fighters breathing heavy here as the second round winds down. Good one, nice two. Ten seconds to the ground. If that's what he could do, he can lure you to sleep and, and, and sneak that left hand in there. Lure you in, huh? Ten! in the eye of Benassi. So Santiago was able to land a couple shots. Listen. Look, all I want you to do is work that body and, 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 and stay in there, bro. Move the head. You're not moving the head. And the punch, your legs got to go in first. And, 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 and your punch is in second. And start working the body, triple up. And you see his legs going back, 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 work, <coughs> working the ankles. You see action here. Right? Super slow mo. Guys come in, and the best thing landed that round with a clash of heads. The clash of heads. <laughs> Third round, scheduled four with the heavyweights. The southpaw is Alex Vanasse, who's 3 0, 3 KOs. Ray Santiago, 2 and 7. Santiago just tried to land a nice body shot, but he got hit with a right hook. See, Vanasse trying to pick up the action here. And you can see Vanasse. Good cut over his right eyebrow. That was a result of the headbutt. Lands a good shot. And Santiago is a big guy. And Vanasse just keeps going upstairs. And, and Santiago Break. just tied. You see, he's holding, he's leaning on. Deep breath there. And Vanasse senses that. He's stepping up the attack. There he is, Vanasse picking it up. Landing on the job of Santiago. Now we got a fight. Vanasse, sense him something. Urgency from Vanasse. A very tired Ray Santiago covering up. Santiago breathing super heavy. But Vanasi's getting some good leverage in those shots. They're still arm punches, but he's still getting some body in it. But mostly arm. Santiago up against the ropes, trying to get off of him. Vanasi smothering him again. Snap back in there. Another big shot for Vanasi. Santiago eating a lot of punches. He's still on his feet, though. But you can see Vanasi, arms getting a little, punches getting a little slower. Is he punching himself out? They're both breathing heavy, Brian. Good combination again from Vanasse. Referee right there Two watching. Shots. Yep. Referee's there telling you to fight back. Santiago just in the turtle shell. All bloody up. And the referee jumps in. It is over. Good stoppage. Good stoppage. A lot of punishment was being absorbed by Ray Santiago and Alex Vanasse. 4 and all and 4 KOs now, and you see that nose just getting busted up. Saved your life this time. I guess there was some back. I, 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 I guess so. Vanasi's yelling and screaming across the ring. Carmo and Albany, huh? Rematch. Who knew? He said, I saved his life this time. The ref saved his life the first time. Look at him, Alex Vanasi. <laughs> <laughs> A little hype there. <laughs> But that's bad sportsmanship. But you can see the, the, the end of the fight. It was just a barrage of shots. That left hand got in clean. Again, arm punches, no body. Right hook gets in. Then there's a couple of body shots that got in here. One, two, one, two. Referee standing around. Really don't want to stop it, but he's forced to stop the fight. He wasn't throwing back. He didn't go down, but it was... Lights up, Vanessa! Lights up, Vanessa!
Lights out, Benas. Keeps his perfect record and gets another KO. 4-0, four, oh, four stoppages. Main event tonight, Tijuana's Juan Munguia. He's undefeated, 28-0, took the fight. A couple weeks notice that he wants to step up into the big time. Well, here's your chance to fight for a belt. He's in a good spot right now. Will he take advantage of it? 21 years old, 28-0. Looking calm in his locker room. Trained by his dad. Also Roberto Alcazar, who used to train Oscar De Loyo in his corner. Should be a good one as he takes on the champion, Saddam Ali. That's coming up later tonight in Verona at Turning Stone Resort Casino. He's very loose and relaxed in the dressing room. Yes, wow. You know they got the Mexican music bumping right now. You know they got it. And he understands that this is an opportunity. And sometimes you have to put in your head that you may not get this opportunity again, so you gotta prepare yourself. Be focused and be ready. He looks very focused. Though he's smiling, 